So the first thing we need to do here is we need to go in and find this eroded text. And uh, honestly, I actually looked for this exact eroded text. I couldn't find it on the font, so I just found something similar. My favorite site here again for fonts is D-A-F-O-N-T, dafont.com. And you can see here under the left, just under fancy, you'll see uh, eroded right there. Click on eroded. I'll sort by popularity. And I just typed in just one before like that, all capital letters. I usually go to 100 fonts so I can go through real quickly and see. And so I went through here. Right away, this one sort of caught my attention, but I noticed it's a little too much eroded. Like, I've done this before where I created a shirt and it was too eroded and I didn't get um, any response. Let me find that shirt. I'm just going to pause here. This is the shirt that I created for uh, the Patriots. Red and blue till I'm cold and red. I'm sorry, blue and red till I'm cold and dead. And um, this didn't sell at all, so I, I'm guessing it's because it was sort of hard to see. The writing was white and it was a little difficult to read it. I think that was the problem with this design. So I try to be careful with that now. You want to be able to really read this on the shirt. If you can hardly see it, like why would you want to buy it, right? So that was a lesson I learned one time with that design. So I definitely wouldn't want to go with that font, but oops. I clicked it by accident. This is kind of neat. I always wanted to try to use this one. You can see there's like a like a city in the background on the bottom of all the text. I've never tested it, but this might be something cool to try out, you know? So this is the one that I got. I thought it was kind of neat because um, you could see these slashes in it, and it kind of reminds me of skating on the ice. So that's why I thought, well, that'd probably be a good fit for NHL, because it kind of looks like skate blades. But not really, just on the word just. And it's not on all of them. There's actually some in here I found that do look like scratches. Um, I think it's near the bottom there. Like that. It was just too much. Oh, right here. With this one, I actually have this one too, this font. It's like little scratches, but I didn't I found that the scratches weren't really big enough. So I'm not sure if they'll print out very good. But anyways, I stuck with the other one. And so to download it again. You just have to click the download button there. So go ahead and download it. It's called plain underscore crash. And I've got it downloaded in my fonts folder here. So I've already downloaded it. And once you download it, just go ahead and extract it. So this is the plain crash. So just right click extract all. I've already done that and it's right here. Then right click and install. Of course, I've already installed it, so I'm not going to do it again. Then you got to restart your Photoshop to get your fonts to load up. So now that I got that font, that's basically all that I really needed. The other fonts I used for the before and the die, I just used uh, Arial Black, which I think is installed on every computer by default. So you should already have it in your Windows computer. You probably don't need to go download it, but of course you could just find it on the font I'm sure you could find a bunch of just basic under the basic um, fixed width I guess would probably be good you could find a bunch of ones that are just like Arial in here but Arial is just everywhere right it's probably even in here uh, it doesn't really it might not be I don't know Anyhow, it's usually in every computer, so I wouldn't worry about it. So the next thing I did is we need to create this. I think the, the most difficult part of this design was creating that H. Let me um, find it again. I actually created it separately on a different, a different image like this here. So why don't we tackle this first, because this is basically the most difficult part of the design. And I'll show you some tricks on how to do stuff like this. So this is really cool. So I'm just going to make a new image. Uh, what was the size of that? I'm, I got to check image size. That one was 500 by 500. So I'll do that again. New 500 by 500. And I need to get that red color. So I'm going to show you how I do things. So I want to go back 
to the Montreal Canadiens website. If you just go into Google and type in Montreal Canadiens and look at their first their website here, canadians.nhl.com. And I'll just head over to the uh, the English site. And then what I'll do here is I'll just take a screenshot of my my on my computer screen and to do that there's a print screen button on your keyboard. Every single keyboard on the planet should have one. Um, well, maybe not, <laughs> but most keyboards have one. And to find it, you just got to look at all your F buttons at the very, very top of your keyboard and go to the very right-hand side. It's it's beside your F12 usually. You'll see a button that says Insert, and then one button beside that, it's uh, Print Screen. So I'll just hit that. I usually hit like three times to make sure it did Print Screen. You don't really see anything happen. It just does it all in the background. And then go over to... Uh, your um, Photoshop and then just go file new and then when you see that the Im the width and the height is huge then you know that it's detecting that you just took a screenshot so I do that and then I'll just go control C on or sorry control V as in Victor on my keyboard and there's my screen my whole screen you can see how big my screen is and you're only seeing a little portion of it I got a big massive computer screen here so what I'll do there is I'll just crop, grab the crop tool and just kind of crop around a little area there. Double click to crop it and then hit the magnifying glass and zoom right in so that I can get some colors here. So the, the main color I'm looking for is right in the logo there. I need that red and I need that blue. So I'm just going to even zoom in farther. And then over here in my color palette, I'll just grab the initial one and just grab the color there. And then for the blue, I'll just grab the blue. Make sure I get the right one there. And that's it. And so I can just close that out. I got my colors over there. Now I want to add a I I can add a background square like this. I can make the background red. I actually don't like that color. It doesn't look like my other one. Um, I like this color better. This one looks a little pale or something, I don't know. Yeah, that's better. Now, I'm going to show you another trick. Like, of course, I can take this square and just put it like that, and that's sort of the background color. Another way to do that is you can actually make the background layer um, here. If you select the background layer, and if you actually hold down your Control key and hit the Back button, that does the blue. So that's this one the back button so you hold down the control key and if you hit the back button it's gonna do this color if you keep that control key down and you hit the delete button oops, um, that's not it sorry <laughs> I thought it'd use another button but or so I thought another button the delete key would actually use the other color palette but no if you just take this little arrow, if you just click that, it switches them around. And now I'll do it again. Control back. And there we go. You got the red color in the background. And now what we can do is start working on this thing here. So when I was first designing this, I had to figure out how do I want it to look. So I had to look at the screenshot of, I went and got a screenshot of the jersey. And so how did I do that? Let me quickly show you again. Just go over to their site and uh, go to uh, shop. I just clicked on shop here. And then I clicked on this jersey right here. And then I clicked on the zoom, the zoom button to bring it in a bit. And then I just hit the print screen on my keyboard. I did the same thing I did before. File, new. OK, Control V, and then I'll just go crop that, and then I'll just zoom in. There we go. And that's how I got in there, and it's just so I can take a look closely of what it looks like. And so, what I initially wanted to do is just put a circle, and then just put the the lines in there without the H. And so I had to figure out, okay, I want the outside to be white. So I was sort of copying what they did. They had a, a white border around here. Then the middle part was white, but this one's different. So I did it the opposite. I did the bars white and then the blue in the middle. 
because that's what the colors are for the Canadians. So let's do that. The first thing I want to do is make a circle. Now, actually, before I make a circle, yep, excuse me, that's fine. I got the hiccups there. So go over to the ellipse tool right here. And now I'm going to make a circle. And what you want to do is uh, hold down your shift key when you're making a circle so it'll make an exact circle um, that's not like an oval. So I'll hold down the shift key and make and make that circle. Left click like that. And if you don't do that, if I let go of that shift key, you'll see it'll start making an oval. I don't want to do that. I want to make it exactly circular. So I'm going to go something like that. That should be good. That's a little bit bigger than what I did before, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file here. I'm just going to call this, uh, I called the other one Hab Logo, just call it uh, Logo 2 for now. And so what I need to do is the first thing, I know that I'm going to make this circle completely transparent because these little parts up top are transparent. If I change the background color, um, to anything else, like say a blue or something. Whoops, um, just like that. I guess not letting me do it. Oh, that's how you do it. You hold down the Alt key and back, and the backspace, or the Control key on the backspace. And that's how you do the two different colors you see here in the background. Cool. But as you can see it's blank it's actually transparent here if I take this out you can see it's transparent in that section there I did that because it'll just take on the color of whatever the shirt is in the background I'm gonna do a red shirt obviously so knowing that this I don't care what the color this is gonna be because I'm just gonna go over to here see this little fill if you don't see the fill button there you can double click this layer and bring up the layer style and go into fill opacity and just take it out so it's completely transparent. But I do want to add a stroke and I want the stroke to be white. And let's make it a little bit bigger like that so we can see it. Maybe six. There we go. Now we got the first part. Now I want to put like the blue bar in the middle. But the first thing I did is I put an H in there first, a big H. So the H, I'm just going to go and click the text tool and just type an H in here. And the H, what font is that? Is just Arial Bold. That's all it is. So every computer has Arial and you, every computer has Bold. So I think every computer does, you should have. So I'm going to change the color of the font to white. And I'm going to make sure under view snap is control is selected and I'm just going to resize that hold down the shift and the alt key at the same time I'll make it resize nicely like that and I sort of made it big at first I had it small but I liked it really big so that people can really recognize that H it's kinda of like it's zooming in to the actual official logo so that's good and usually when you have it in the center it'll kinda of snap there but you can also um, hit the um, the crop there, and then in the very left-hand side in the ruler section, if you don't see that ruler section there, go to View and make sure the rulers are selected. And then just left-click in here and then drag, and you'll see one of these bar things. And just wait till it snaps to the center. You do the same from the top. Now you know the absolute center of your image. And just make sure everything is centered there so I can zoom in. And when you select it, just make sure that little crosshair is right in the center there. So I'm just going to put it right in the center. And you can use your little um, keys there, your arrow keys, to make sure it gets in there. And same with the out outer one as well, the circle. So if I zoom out, hold down, grab the magnifying glass, hold down the Alt key, and then click left click, we'll zoom out. So grab that circle and we'll just use the arrow keys and make sure that it's, it's centered there. There we go. So now I know everything's nice and centered. Next, I want to make this blue part here. To make a blue part, all I do is I go over to the, 
tools here and I grab the rectangle tool and then I'll just make a rec make a rectangle like that and it's already the blue color if it's not the blue color I'll just double click down here and select blue alright and I just want to even that up with the text so I'm gonna take this layer and put it underneath the H but it's over top my circle so then I can just line it up at the top of the H and I'll grab the bottom and line it up to the bottom of the H you can see there's a bit of a little line there so I'm just gonna zoom in and make sure it will be underneath there or match right up now sometime when it's on snap it won't line up right so you're gonna to have to go in and remove the snap temporarily so that you can line it up manually like this pixel by pixel there we go got that lined up I'll put snap back on now and if I just zoom out get the uh, magnify glass hold down the alt key left click zoom out cool so we got that first part now we need two more white bars above the top like that let's do that next and so the way I'll do that is I'll just grab this same box so I'll grab the uh, select tool at top there move tool and I just grab the box and I'm gonna make a copy of it and here's another way to make a copy of it you can hold down the control and the alt key on your keyboard at the same time and then use the up arrow key okay now let go of the control and alt key and now you can just use the arrow key and just put up and you can see that there's another object there I can hold down the shift key at the same time as the arrow to move it just a little faster and there we have a copy of that object but I like doing it that way because I know that the object is exactly lined up with this one so if I use my mouse I may be off a bit it doesn't really matter that much in this particular case because we're going to be shaving off the outer edges to match up with the circle anyways but anyhow that's what I did and then now this is one thing that I noticed um, you see the thickness of this line the thickness of this white bar when looking at the original logo here if you look at that thickness of that H there this bar it looks like it's the same thickness as this white bar going across it looks very very similar so that's what I did I just made it the same thickness so how do you do that it's very very simple so I'll take this bar here first thing I want to do is change the color of it to white so I'll just double click on the object here in the layers or the layer I should say in the layer palette and just make it white and then I'll just shrink it up a bit there now grab a corner and then hold down the shift key and you see my little arrow my my pointer turn to um, like a little uh, a rotational arrow kind of thing if you hold down your shift key as you're rotating it will rotate in in uh, angles like you'll see it'll go to that angle 15 degrees for 30 45 now if you let go of the shift key it's just gonna go to any angle but I want exactly horizontal so if you hold down that shift key you'll make sure you get it perfectly horizontal or sorry vertical <laughs> and now I'll just kinda move it with my my mouse keys until I get it right lined up and I'll just zoom in so I can see what I'm doing so I'll grab the object and I'll just make sure it gets right to the edge there hit enter and that's that's good and I'll zoom back out so I'll do the same thing grab the magnifying glass alt key left click I'll grab a go near a corner until you see that curved corner I, um, pointer and then hold down the shift key and do the same thing and just put it back to horizontal and now I'm just gonna put it up to the top there and I can see that it's not quite lined up so I'm gonna just use the arrow key to make sure it gets down looks like there's a little gray spot there. one more there we go so let's, let's zoom out again and I'm gonna grab that and make a copy of it so I'm gonna hold down the control and alt key at the same time and hit the down arrow key now I'm gonna hold the shift key and hit the down arrow key to make it move all the way down to the bottom and then I'll just use the arrow key without the shift to get it up until it matches up nicely and there we go the last thing we gotta do is now trim these uh, layers so it goes nicely around that that circle so <laughs> sorry excuse me I'm going to um, do that now 
And the way that we do that, there's three objects we got to trim. So it's this top bar, this blue bar, and this bottom white bar. So the first thing you have to do in order to trim these, you have to change the object to rast you have to rasterize it. And how you do that, just go over here to the layer palette, right click and select rasterize layer. I don't know if you can see that there. Right click, rasterize layer. And then do the same for the blue one. Right click, rasterize layer. And then the bottom one down here. Right click, rasterize layer. Good. Now here comes the magic part everyone's been waiting for. How do you trim those? How do you trim those things up? It's pretty simple. What you want to do is you see where the circle is there. So the idea here is I want to trim the outside of the circle. So I have to select the outer rim of the circle and then I have to select the outside of the outer rim, like all this space around. And it's really simple to do actually. You just hold down, so you see this object here, the circle object. You put your mouse over top this part here and you hold down your control key and just left click and it will but actually you can see that it's going to be um, cutting on the inside I want to cut on the outside of it now the reason it's going on the inside is because this layer has a uh, a stroke um, feature applied to it so I'm just gonna deselect that here go select uh, deselect or control D on your keyboard and if I double click this you can see we have that stroke there so it's because this stroke is applied on top or outside of the object so I want to make that stroke as part of the object and it's really simple all you gotta do is just get this object right click and rasterize it now one thing I love doing when I'm designing is I like keeping copies of things just in case I mess up. So a good idea before you do anything is just right click and duplicate that layer. And then just make it hidden. Hit the little eyeball there and make it hidden. So just in case you mess up you still have a copy of it. I do that all the time and I can't tell you how many times that saved my butt by losing a piece of, of an image that I had to redesign again. So just get in the habit of doing that. So now let's take this layer, um, the one on top there, and right click and rasterize it. And now that border is going to be part of the actual object as well. So if I go and do that thing again, go right click, or sorry, uh, hold down the control key. Oh, it's still not doing that here. Let me see. Now, might have to go and rasterize again. So go rasterize layer type. There we go. Now I want to show you another trick. Like that didn't work when I rasterized it. If I do it now, you'll see it. Oh, now you see it's actually rasterizing around that. that's not what I want either so I'm going to deselect and I'm going to undo what I just did so you go to the actions go to history and I'll show you another way so I just deleted all those things I just did what I can do is right click convert this to a smart object and then right click and convert it and then go rasterize layer Ah, I just did the same thing. The reason is because it's actually um, what's happening here is the it's the fill opacity is is gone, so it's transparent. So what we can do is let's just leave that there as the way it is. And um, what we can do is take the original one that we saved here. So let's just make that one non-visible and make this original one. And let's bring back the fill opacity so it's fully there. And now I'm just going to right click and I'm going to convert to smart object and then rasterize. And now if I select it, it's going to select the outside. Okay? But I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. But for now, now that I have the outside selected, now what I want is I want the I don't want this selected. I want all the parts outside selected. And the way to do that is to inverse this selection. So you can go select inverse. And now it's selecting all this area out here and not the area inside the circle. So hopefully that made sense. I'll show you again here. I'll just deselect. When you grab this, when you put your mouse over this object and you hold down the control key and select, it will select this circle. So it's selecting everything inside that circle. 
I want to select everything outside the circle because you can see these pieces of these objects I need to trim on the outside of the circle. So again, just go select, inverse the selection. Now that we have this selection, all we have to do is just select each one of these objects, the square, the three squares, one at a time. Just select it over here and hit the delete key. It will magically trim for you. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Deselect. And then what I want to do is remember I don't want to use this circle. I want to use the other one. And we're done. That's exactly that's exactly how I did it, except for one thing. Um, this layer, you see that I lost the white border there, so I just have to move it above those squares. There we go. That's what I wanted. I wanted the white border to go all the way around. And that's all I did. So now that we have that saved, let's just put it off the side and start our design of the shirt. Uh, sorry, the design of the text for the shirt. Let's make a new image. And we'll do this one, 800 pixels wide by 1,000 high, 72 pixels per inch at a color mode of 8 bits RGB color with a background of white. Click OK. And that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Let's try that again. What happened there? 800. I probably put 100, didn't I? Not 1,000. There we go. OK, that's better. I want the background here to be red, so hold down the control backspace. There we go. And if we do the alt backspace, we go blue. So the control backspace is the red, the alt backspace is the front color. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and I'll just call it uh, design. I already called it design one, so I'll just go design example. Example one. Now let's go and add those the text. So I'm just going to grab the text tool and put it in and just type the word just. Make that really big. And so the font that we downloaded was called that plane crash one. So we'll go over to the character here. And if you can't find the character window, just go window character and it will show it up. And I'm going to go and look for that. So look for P, L M N O P, plane crash. Okay. <laughs> give you pictures of planes. <laughs> Interesting. Anyhow, I found that it only does those weird pictures when you do capitals. So if you just don't do capitals, just that's how I got the text for that particular font. So just, and then I want to make a copy of that. So I went, the one trick that I showed before is Control Alt key down at the same time. So make sure the object, the text object, is selected. If you don't see the bounding box around it with these little boxes, make sure this checkbox up here is selected for Show Transform Controls. I think in earlier versions of Photoshop that may be called bounding box or something like that. Anyways, select it, hold down the Shift and Alt, left click and drag. And now let's put the word one. Whoops, can't use capitals for this font. Just one. Same thing. And more. Now I did, I changed it because a lot of those shirts said just one before I die. I put just one more before I die because the Canadians have actually won like a lot of cups in their in their time, so I think they may have even have the record of the most Stanley Cups, Stanley Cups or something like that. I'm not sure. That's why I put one more because it doesn't really make sense. Just one. That makes more sense for football, given that you know some football teams have never won the Super Bowl before, and it's so difficult. You know, let's just make it a little bit bigger there and get rid of that letter O. And just kind of move it over there and. Make sure more is sort of lined up right. I'll line it up with this one over here. Again, I'm holding down the shift key while I resize there. Now, it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough room here, so I'm just going to go image, canvas, and I'm going to change the height to say 1500. 
and I'm just going to hit this up arrow key so it's going to add that extra height at the bottom of my image like that and I'm going to and you see the background I hit the background again I'm going to do that uh, control backspace to get it all red again now I'm going to use the arrow keys to move that around just one more we can also we can take our image here the one we created and put it right here if we'd like and so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take all of the stuff here and I'm going to put it into a group. So I'm going to select everything here. You can do that by holding down your shift key and select the first object, first layer, and then select the next one. They're all selected. And then you can go control G to group it. Control G as in George. Control G. That puts it all into a group. And then what I'll do with that decide, I'll take this group, drag it onto here. And at the very top, you'll see auto select. I always keep that uh, check mark, but you can select things by group or by layer. I'll keep it on group for this option because I want to just select this whole group and move it. Now, if I had it set the layer, you'll notice it'll grab a layer and start moving it. That's not what I want. Control Z to undo group. And then I'll go and put it here. Grab a corner and let's just size it so it matches up nicely there. I'll just go over here, make sure it's about right. I'll zoom in, make sure I get it right here. Now, uh, looking at the object, you can see that I lost all the resolution there. That's because I forgot to um, convert to a smart object for that particular object there. So I gotta delete that and do it again. So let's go grab this group, drop it in again. So if you missed what I did, I went to the other image off the screen and grabbed the group again, and then I just move it off the side a bit, and then drag it in. And I'm going to go into the group, and I actually I'm just going to take all the objects. There's one, two, three, four objects. I'm going to right-click each of them and convert them to a smart object. That'll make sure when I resize things, it's not going to look all pixelated and like garbage. So. Let's make this bigger so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll just uh, grab a corner, hold down the shift key and make sure it sort of lines up nicely. That looks good. Let's zoom out here. All right, looking pretty good. Now let's do the next text there. So before I die, and you'll notice that I actually put the Stanley Cup for the letter I. I don't know. I thought it looked cool. <laughs> you can also put the letter or the Stanley Cup where the D, the D I E, the die is as well for the I in the die. <laughs> can do that. But anyway, so let's just do before. I want to change that font to Arial. Arial's at the top right here. If you can see that. Then I'll go to bold and I have to grab the text tool and go into, into here and make it capital before I actually think I didn't do bold. I did uh, black. I think I went into black. It makes it even more bold. Yeah, that's what I did. So it's not Arial bold, it's Arial black. I'm not sure if you have to download that font, but I'm sure you can find it. So I did something like that. And let's make another one. So select it, Control Alt, left click and drag. And make that one the other word, die. And we'll just make it nice and big. Whoops. Hold down the shift key, grab a corner. Make sure it sort of lines up there. We'll line things up a little bit better after here. So the next thing I did, I noticed that with the other. Um, 
other designs, they have a border around these two words, like before I and die, and the border looks the same as the border around this, but I, I didn't do it that way. I gave it, actually no I did, sorry. I gave this word and that word um, the color blue, so, and then I put a white border around it like that, so it sort of matches that circle there. So I went and changed the color of this to that color, just select the, the text, and um, bring up the text tool, go to the color palette, and just click in here, do the same for that, make it blue. Now let's give that a border. I actually think I changed the spacing of the letters with my original design. I do want to see what I did on my original design here. Oops. I want to see if I did the spacing. Yeah, I did spacing minus 75. Okay. Um, so take that and so select the text and go spacing minus 75. And this one looks too close, so I'll go minus 50. I don't want it touching too much there. Now I gotta add the borders to them. So it's, it's double click the text layer here and go uh, stroke. And what I like doing is uh, so set it to white. I like using this position on the in, or sorry, center. I'll center it. So if, if you go on the inside, it sort of like makes the font really small. You can do on the outside to keep it nice and fat. If you just do center, it sort of goes halfway in between. So let's go. Let's uh, go for a stroke of five pixels. That looks like a little bit too much, maybe four. Same one here. Stroke, center, five, and... The last thing we need is a little Stanley Cup image. And so the way that I did that is just go on over to Google and type in Stanley Cup head on over to images and it doesn't really matter which one you grab I think I just grabbed that one usually what I I do is I would type in Stanley Cup or whatever I'm looking for because I just need the outline of it and you can do a silhouette usually you can find a, a silhouette like this but this one looks like you gotta buy it so I don't see any silhouettes sort of this one might be okay it's too small uh, that one has a shadow around it that's not what I want let's just go back to what it was before and just, just grab this one here Yeah, good enough. Right click. I like this one because you can see that it's a PNG. There's no white space around it. I like that. So just right click, save as, and we'll save it in our Shell Montreal. Save it here. I think I originally used this one. I'm not sure. Anyhow, but I'll just open up that one we just uh, downloaded there. file open <laughs> there it is <laughs> it is very very big it's huge all right I need to make this smaller here so I'm just going to make it smaller grab a corner actually no I have to um, convert this to a smart object first so right click convert to smart object and then I'm just gonna resize it down so it's smaller and then let's just drag this over here there we go. Close that other image. So I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to double click it and I'm going to do color overlay of white. 
and grab a corner and just hold down the shift key and just resize it. So one idea is you could put it here for the eye if you wanted to, but I just kind of stuck it here. Like that. So now let's line things up a little bit and then we're pretty much done. So I'm just going to tighten this up, crop it at the bottom here and just bring it up a little bit. Zoom out. And now I'm just going to left click in the ruler bar and bring over some of these guidelines, I guess that's what they're called, and just kind of put them near the edge here of the, f of the text, the biggest text, probably the top one there. Just get it as close as you can so it fits on both sides of the text. Now just take everything else and make sure it's all lined up using your arrow key so it's right at the edge there. This one, let's get that over to the edge. And I can see that uh, I got a little bit more space here, so let's just make that text a little bigger. Hold down the shift key. So click a corner, left click a corner, hold down the shift key and just make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And then this one here, make sure it's right over to the left, close to that guideline and grab a corner again and just hold down the shift key and match up to the other guideline. Let's move this down and kind of do the same here. And I, I didn't make the, the cup the same size as the text, like the same height. I left it a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. So that's probably good enough. And then let's go over here and make that line up as well. Finally, let's just crop this all out. Crop the bottom here, get it close to the bottom. Sometimes you'll snap right to the edge of the text and I just I don't want to do that because sometimes you might have a shadow or like here this border it'll actually snap and you'll lose the border sometimes so when I'm when I'm actually cropping I'll go up here and I'll go view and I'll take the snap off so I can I don't, it won't be snapping a text so I can just visually just get really close to the edges myself so I don't lose anything double click and we're done next thing we finally do looks like I moved something something's wrong here there's a little red gap there I don't know what happened I must have moved something by accident in my group so what I'm going to do is is fix that here I think what happened is when I resized everything it, it sort of didn't match up right so if you go up to group select layer so that when you click in here it actually goes right to the layer I'm just gonna hit the down key and see if that fix it up I still see a little bit of a gray area there I can grab this bottom one and move up one I gotta make sure everything is still lined up there nice uh, looks like a little gray area at the top too so I'm making this down one I think we're good to go so let's zoom back out here all right we got rid of that little problem let's save okay so finally to save the image I'm just gonna go and, re and uh, remove the background not remove it but just make it not visible so that red layer just make it not visible and now here we go. And what's really important, you'll notice that this entire image only has two colors, white and blue. So that's what you want. You don't want no more than three colors. I always try to stick with just two. There we go. And you'll notice that I want to have red in this area here. And I already know that I'm going to put it on a red shirt. So I know that that red will come through there. So I don't need to put a red color there. That's important because if I add red, to the image that's a third color and that can that can lower your profits because it'll be more money to put more color on your shirt so that's important so you might as well use the color of the shirt to come through and fill in that color red for you let's go ahead and save this as a PNG file save as format format PNG okay 
now we're good to go and we can now go into our our campaigns here go to uh, launch new campaign I select the red upload upload I always like to upload my image now there's some reason I see that my original image is a different blue I might have hmm. anyhow this is the blue that you want let me see what my other image was let me just if you select that and you hit the little delete there you'll delete out that image let me open up my other image my original one yeah it looks like I end up using a different blue color it's like a dark dark blue uh, what I find is you should be sticking really closely to the real blue colors of the actual team because when people are passionate about their team they want to be wearing the real colors not some fake colors oh I got the color from there probably um, let's just go back to their main site and I want to make sure I get the real blue like this is probably the real blue right here right down in this bar but let's just go to their site and let's make sure we get the blue that comes out of the logo or even the blue in the Habs text there so I'm just gonna print screen again and make sure I get that right blue color just zoom in here let's go with this blue color so I'm gonna grab that and make sure it's blue that's about the same color as I already had so it's nearly identical so we'll just stick with the blue color we got it's the same color we got there but if you want to change the color of the text just grab the text go to the character and change it like this yeah it's it's, it's the same color so we'll leave mine my older one I don't think I should use that one it's, blue is not blue enough I really like sticking to the original colors there and I look at that that sort of reminds me of the real Canadian so I like making it really nice and big like take up a lot of that area you don't take it all up and there we go so just one before I die <laughs> and that's the that's basically the design so I don't think there's any more I wanted to show in this one just wanna show how this was designed we'll see you in the next video so I went ahead and tried that other idea I had I just went and designed it by replacing instead of putting the Stanley Cup where this eye is I figured you can put it here and then I decided well why don't I show you a trick that um, I see a lot of in different designs where you get your image but you see how it's sort of like I don't know how to say it, like a not a silhouette but it's just one color but it's kinda like um, not all there I don't know how to explain that but excuse me I want to show you how I did that with the actual Stanley Cup here let me just um, show you what I'm talking about but you can see this kinda like I guess sort of silhouette where this here all it is is just white there's nothing on the background like you can see it's totally just one color but it's sort of just parts of the actual um, a lot of people do this in shirt designs in fact I've had some successful ones that have this similar kind of thing let me just show you so this is an example of one that I did here with uh, Peyton Manning um, it's a bit of a gray area to definitely use someone's name and especially their number but I didn't get it shut down they didn't really care that much about it um, so NFL didn't come after me on that one that was cool that one did made some money um, let me show you the original image the reason why I did this is because I noticed another designer used the exact same image and I just changed the text and did a little different than he did uh, let me show you where I got that image from here let me just bring it up this is the original image so I turned that into that and it sort of looks like looks like this zoomed in a bit 
I even tried a different one. Um, it was it was this one here with him holding the football. I didn't find that one as, as nice as the one where he's holding his arms up. It just looks cool with his fist pumping in the air sort of thing. And I'll show you it anyways. Uh, where is it? There it is. I did it like that. There's actually, you can see how really smooth those lines are. There's another trick for doing that. But um, anyhow, this to do that, it's actually fairly simple. And I'm going to use the same concept in here for this. So let me just show you how I did that. And then all I did, I just replaced it within that image um, of the other one we just created. So let me just bring it back up. Where is it now? Oh, there it is here. Um, sorry, just trying to find my file. The, the one we just created. So all I did is I just removed the eye out of there. So I can show you how I did that. I put the eye where this one is. Now, of course, you can also take just a silhouette and put it there. You know, there's something to test. I just figured I'd just show you a two-in-one here, how to, how to do this. Let me show you the original. That's the original, and it's the same one we got from the from the other one here like this is that's that same that same image that we downloaded so I just got the same image and I just resize it and dropped it into here so I, I could just start again from the beginning so I'll just open that file up that we bought or um, got from Google Google images and we just searched for um, Stanley Cup and so this is pretty big but I'll just drop it in here anyways and you can see it's pretty huge so I can have to make it smaller so over here I'll go convert that to a smart object and then uh, grab a corner hold down the shift key and just uh, resize it down so it's smaller if you hold down the shift and alt at the same time it just it just resizes better faster a little easier also evenly and so I'll just go like this to show it here and let's just get that one out of view there. I just got to get some files out of the way here. They're confusing me. There we go. So we take this, and the first thing I'm going to do is right click and rasterize the level or the layer. And then you want to go over to Image Adjustments, and you want to look for uh, where is it now? Okay, it's image adjustments. I just saw it here. A threshold. There it is. All right. So what threshold does? It just changes the image to black and white, and that's it, with different shadows. And and all I do is you just grab this little thing here and you just start going through. You can go completely white or completely dark. So you just kind of. I what I what I wanted was I wanted the white part. So I'm just concentrating on the white. I want quite a bit. So I. If you want to take a little bit of the white out, you just kind of fool around with it there. So the part that I want to stay is the white, and I want to remove the black parts. So let's say we stuck with that. So you got lots of white there, so you can see the cup. Now I got to get rid of that black everywhere in there. <clears throat> to do that, we want to use it. Just select your layer here. Make sure it's selected down here in the layers palette. Now go up to select range, color range and you want to select all the blacks. So right when this comes up make sure you have uh, select sample sampled colors and you'll have a little color picker just click somewhere in the black like that click OK and now all the black is selected and I'll just hit the enter or delete key on your keyboard and delete out all that black and go select deselect and there's actually still going to be black all around in there little tiny bits of black you don't want any black in there you want it one color so just double click on that layer and do a color overlay of white now everything is white now we have that cool looking um, Stanley Cup <laughs> just like that that's pretty neat that's all I did now if we bring up that other image the one we created there this is the example one we created now what I do is I usually take this image and I go file, save as, 
and this would be example two. <clears throat> and this is how I would do split testing. So like I'd be like, okay, I want to test one design and then test another design to see which one would work. So next thing I want to do, let's just zoom out a bit here. Hold down the Alt key and just left click, bring it out, and so you can see it. And I need some more room down here, so I'm going to go image, canvas, and go up, click the top arrow, and make the height like 1500. All right. So the next thing, I want to take this word die and make a copy of it, so I'm going to go Control Alt and left click and drag. And I'll just get rid of the IE. And do the same thing again. And just make that one an E. Get rid of this one. Go over here and grab my cup. Drag it in. Let's make sure we convert that to a smart object. So in the layer palette, right click, smart object so that it will resize nice and evenly or nice and clean so I can resize it there so let's go up to this one delete that one and let's put the I into here space I of course we can line that up a little bit between our guidelines that we put there from last time there and now we just basically just line things up to make it look sort of cool Hold down the Shift and Alt key and just line it up. Sort of put it in the middle there. That's basically all I did, you know. I didn't do much more than that. Looks a little tight. Maybe make the letters a little smaller. So grab both of those. Hold down the Shift key and select both of them together. Or you can select the two layers in the layer palette on the right there, the E and the D. Now hit a corner, click a corner, hold down the Shift key and just resize evenly so maybe like that and put them back in place there that's one way to do it and looking at that honestly it's sort of hard to see the cup but it probably look really cool in a shirt something really got to test so another way to do it is just make a full silhouette of it and to do a full silhouette it's really really simple all you have to do is let's just go back to um, a large image there of the cup and I did save a couple here. Just move that. So just take that cup, a double whoops, that's not three. Double click that layer and go color overlay. And just overlay the whole thing with white. Now we have a full silhouette of white. And we can just drop that into into our image there and see what that looks like. Of course, we got to rasterize that. So I'm just gonna just gonna remove that for now. Rasterize that silhouette. Sorry, uh, convert to smart object <laughs> so I can resize it properly. And then I'll just go ahead and resize it like I did before and kind of make it even up there. Something like that. Let's take the other one there and so that's one way to do it. We can duplicate that layer and maybe model it what we did there like we can give it a stroke of white make it the color blue oh, sorry color overlay and make that blue and give it a stroke of white uh, five we do on the inside the uh, it looks like there's a little problem there do on the outside how about center? No. Outside. So that's another variation of the shirt. Then we can go ahead and make the background not visible. Uh, then save it as a PNG file save as PNG now we can go into our shirt 
see what it looks like. So that's another variation. Just one more before I die. I don't know which one would work. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. I have I have it's been so many times when I think the one that I like the most is going to sell the most. That is just so wrong. I learned the hard way. Like I look at this one right here and I sort of like this one the best, but I tell you right now it's probably not the best selling one. It could have been the first one or the other one with the silhouette, the other silhouette in there. It's hard to tell that it just takes a matter of testing to really figure out which one is going to sell better. But that's I just want to show you how to create variations of the same design so you can do some split testing and try some different things. You can even try different fonts and all sorts of things. So that's another variation of that shirt design.